What's up guys, my name is Sammy Forsen, host of the Weekend City Show and Ignition right here on Joy 99.7 FM. Well, anytime you happen to be busy and you miss out on your favorite shows right here on Joy FM, here's what you can do. Log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast. Just go on there and you'll find all your shows on demand 24-7. There you can catch up. Remember, Joy FM remains your radio for discerning listeners. All right, the e bike train is back inside Comerica. I'm talking about the Ashanti region. Uh, the capital is Kumasi. Yes, we are back. The last time we came here, we had the privilege to have a conversation with gospel legend Yao Sapon. We're back again, and guess what? We have another fastest rising uh, musician to have a conversation with. Let's explore the life of the beautiful Jackie. Yes, you know the name. It's Jackie, and we know that my mind day for you which is the reason why you have to stick and stay with us wow right so like i was saying the Before this drop, right. I want I want you to play some guitars okay. other side. Then the chorus, I repeat the chorus again right. before the second days you get it. That's yeah. Cool. Right. Hi Becky. Oh, so sorry. Oh no, no. Yeah, so that's fine. This is iPuppy. iPuppy. Yeah. How are you? One of the yeah. hardest producers in Kumasi. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. Let me let I'll just sit here. Yeah, and what will we do? Yes, right. please. Alright. Okay, so just cut that please and record that part again. Okay, sure. Light off. Hi puppy, I think we're good, right? Yeah. From this part. This part towards that's the that's end. That. I think we can play the guitars there. Okay. And then the saxophone can come in the beginning. Get to so that the song can have that feel. Right. That's all. Yeah, that's you don't want to roll like any rolls. The like, drum rolls. Eh? Yeah, play, play the side. Play the other side. Forty-five. Yes. You can, you can play from there. Forty-five. Right? Yes, from forty-five. Forty-five to forty-five. Yes, yes. We can have the drum rolls from your side. Oh, you know the vibes. <laughs> Becky. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Obviously, I was expecting her somewhere else, but then where else could you expect Jackie to be? She obviously is, is in the studio. And what surprised me, mm -hmm. Jackie, is that you have to switch off the lights before you create music. Yeah, what was that? Actually. Is that some sort of uh, witchcraft or <laughs> something? I think we can call it that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a spiritual moment for me whenever I have to record music because I feel like it's not even I feel like whenever the place is dark mm. I feel I'm in the studio alone even okay. without the producer okay. and I feel like I'm the only person existing at that moment do you understand so okay. I'm able to imagine whatever I want to write in terms of the lyrics especially when it's a love song or a song that has to deal with the emotions mm. whenever I record in dark and quiet places I'm able to to, to portray my emotions or the lyrics of the song into the beat and the song always feels real when you listen to them. Sounds like you were born with this. Um, I mean, obviously, coming mm -hmm. from a musical family. Right. The song playing is, you know, the, the, the song that you recorded together with uh, Bisakede, right? Right. So this is... Is that, is, that, is that's that your very first song? My very first collaboration. Your very first collaboration. Yes, yes, with a mainstream artist. Um, I have a song. I have, I have a song that I did with 
some guys okay. before I recorded Sumimu, but Mr. K Day is the first mainstream artist that I recorded with, and we recorded the song in 2019. Sumimu has actually done really, really good. Mm. I'm sure you know the song as well. Yeah, yeah. Mr. K Day also did his part and did it massively well. I think I recorded that song. If I remember very well, I had clothes from class. Okay. Yeah. And I came here. That day was a very rough day for me as well. Okay. And I scheduled with iPapi, but I almost cancelled. But then I came and then played the beats. I wrote the song here and recorded it here in that booth over there. With the lights off. With the lights off. And since that song dropped, mm. I don't think anyone that knows my music will mention their favorites without mentioning to me more. And it was produced by a Kumasi producer, I Papi, I Papi inside which we the saw yeah, yeah. earlier on. Right. So, um, how much does the studio mean to you first? Mm -hmm. And also, um, how did fame come about? Which song pushed you into the limelight? I mean, before we all got to know that this is Jackie you know before right. the musical journey before right. you know uh, who, somebody will say that before I don't be I don't move. okay yeah. so yes the studio is my safe haven mm. I I can actually sleep in the studio for days it's the place I find peace and comfort because I feel whatever I imagine I can be able to put it into something called music for people to listen and also sometimes relate to a lot of people relate to my songs do you get it and I always come to the studio when I when sometimes I could even have something doing but when I immediately I feel I want to record a song mm. I have to be in the studio do okay. you understand and the producers I work with are they always have to be people that I'm comfortable around. Do you understand? I'm I'm never new to a producer. If I meet a producer today, I don't just start recording with the person. I need to pick some sort of connection with the person because it's going to be just me and the person in the studio okay. recording. And now, life with fame. Was that what you asked me? Life before fame. Perfect. For instance, how did you meet? Uh, I puppy. I puppy. With me, I never knew I was going to be an artist. Okay. To be very honest, I just saw myself as someone that was interested in entertainment. Okay. That was what I told myself. So, anything that has to do with um, acting, being behind the cameras, mm. or being in front of the cameras, anything that has had to do with entertainment, I just wanted to be a part of it. Okay. I was the entertainment prefect in my secondary school, TIA Mass, okay. in Kumasi. So I was always around entertainment. My dad as well, growing up around entertainment. But when I got to the university, I had a, a friend, he's called Sosa, he's a Nigerian producer. He was also a student as at that time. He produced my first song, Love is Pretty. And then he also produced most of my songs. Never Like This, he produced Never oh, Like This okay. as well. And so there was a time that I went to his hostel, he's a Brunei hostel. And then he played a beat and then he, he said he was going to send it to me. I should just do something around it. Mind you, as at that time, I didn't know like how I would sound in front of the recording mic microphone. Yeah. But I had recorded the song when I was six years old. But I mean, I was a, I was a child, so mm. I, cannot, I cannot say this is how I sound. Yeah. So I never knew how I sounded in the studio okay do you understand so he sent it i was listening to the beat i don't even know how i wrote the lyrics to that song the lyrics were just flowing mm. so i wrote down the lyrics we scheduled i had to go and meet him in his room at brunei hostel then we recorded love is pretty i remember that day i had an argument with my mother i will never forget mrs maria champo <laughs> She kept asking, where are you? Like, we've closed. You know, okay. I don't sleep on campus. Yeah. So where are you? Where are you? How, how come you're not home at this time? And I was like, oh, I've come to a, a friend's place. I'm recording a song. She was so angry. And the friend happens to be a man. Yeah, and a you know guy. How, Thank you very you know much. Melissa, yes. Did you do anything, you know, that will make her suspect that you are doing something really wrong? No, you know, we were, which we were introverts. Myself, my siblings, my dad, my dad, you would never, if you see my dad outside, then he has something to do. 
you will never see my dad outside so all of us we are indoors all the time so okay. if you you are out past the time you are supposed to be out then they start getting yeah. worried do you understand yeah. plus my dad is known so they were very protective they still are so I sent a, a, a video of me recording like I'm at the studio. Miami Ways on da. Where are you? Yeah. So I had an argument with her and even at that place my mood changed because I'm going home to be trouble. <laughs> Do you understand? But I knew the song was good and all that. So I went home and then I mean I told her what I was doing. Did she she, she calm she became calm. Okay. But I mean we had we had a serious argument when I was there. So the song came out. The song was ready. I played it to her. And one thing about my mom is she always knew. She saw what I had, mm. what I didn't know I had. Okay. So when I was in SHSJ, just when I was a child, whenever her family members and friends come to the house, one friend Jackie and on it was always pissing me off. Because why? She'll call me, oh, come and, come and sing. When I'm singing, she'll be like, hey, won't you whine? Won't you turn around? Won't you do that? You know? That's a very supportive So it's mom. more more of like she tr she trained me, but I never saw it. I mm. saw it as she bothering me. Yeah. Do you understand? And then I didn't know she was grooming me. So Love is Pretty came out. For my dad, he didn't know I went to record the song. I just sent him the song that I've recorded the song. He listened. He loved it. And then during that time... I hadn't met my manager, Electro okay. Mirror. I hadn't met him yet. And then, funny enough, he was somebody I used to watch on TV, my manager. Mm -hmm. When I was in SHS, he used to do a show, an entertainment show okay. as well. So I texted him on Twitter. And then, because I knew that he was someone who was known in the industry, behind the cameras though. So I texted him. I was like, I have a song. I want you to listen to it. I actually sent it to a couple of people. Okay. So I sent the link, and then he was like, No, nah, this song is really good. Wow. We need to we need to go through the proper processes. I was in a hurry to drop the song because I wanted to drop it to my friends and family. I didn't want to drop. I wasn't dropping the song like I'm an artist. Okay. And he was like, No, nah, no, nah, relax. There's a long process. So instead of dropping it the time I wanted to drop it, he dropped the song like five months after. Okay. Because he told me it was the process a step-by-step -step thing all of that and then he started managing me from 2019 i want to go back to uh love is pretty mm. because that's your first song yeah i'm actually talking about love is pretty yeah that's your first song. yeah and you had obviously an argument with your mom mm -hmm. because of how you had to go and record and all of that um how did you come about the love is pretty who Whose idea was that? Was that your idea or was yeah, your the name Yeah, the name of the, the name. song. Yeah, the name of the song was my idea. Okay. Yeah, because that was the chorus. Love is pretty, can't you see? So I just used that as Were the Were you dating of the song. Your, your friend or, or no, the, the one recording? The producer, yeah. nah, none of that sort. Nothing at all. And it, it, sometimes it's overwhelming for me myself how I'm able to write love songs. Okay. Do you understand? Although I'm not in a relationship yet. Okay. Do you understand? So I would just classify that as part of the talent. Let's just say mm. love stories are my stronghold. Do you understand? There are some artists too who are really good with songs that are inspirational. Yeah. Some are also very good with songs that are for, you know, just partying and all that. So I would say my stronghold is love, is love stories. Wow. Yeah. That's... When I'm writing love songs, the lyrics flow easily. Okay. Yeah. So... Between uh, the time that she recorded Love is Pretty mm. and Needed Me, mm -hmm. how many songs uh, in, in all do, do, do we have? Yeah, so I have I have five singles mm -hmm. before I dropped my EP, which has five songs. Okay. So I have so. Love is Pretty, never like this, Control, mm. Somimu, Nane Nyame. Then I dropped the Seed EP, which has The Journey, Forever, wine, vacation, and then um, joy and happiness. That's another five. So ten. Then need me eleven. Need me eleven. Eleven. Uh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. And how far are we going? We're doing really good. So the thing is, let me just go back a bit. Never like this mm -hmm. was the song that introduced me into the Ghanaian market. Tell me about it. Yes. So never like this was produced by the same guy who produced Love Is Pretty. Who's not your boyfriend? Who is not my boyfriend? Okay. Yes. The guy my mom almost had an issue with, <laughs> right? So never like this dropped in 2019, and the response was crazy. Okay. Like the people, especially for the people that had 
like real heartbreak I was getting a lot of messages people had people were telling me about their relationship problems like and I was like hey you can't I, I don't advise people like yeah. just just yet do you understand they were just I could see that music can actually hit the soul mm. from never like this I actually realized that music is some serious thing like you can actually speak to people through music so big artists like Sarkodie Sarkodie posted a song on his main page and then the, the song that, that never like this the yeah. video I just woke up no no DM nothing he just posted it it was wow. crazy and then that day I think he followed me after I posted that he followed me I was going I was telling everybody that Sarkodie at the time you had like how many uh, followers uh, I think Sarkodie I, I didn't followed? have I think I didn't I think I had I think I had maybe 10,000 okay you were doing you were doing I think well. yeah I had 10,000 or maybe 15,000 yeah. so so would you say that Sarkodie played like a Oh, oh, yes, oh. yes. Everybody on his page, I'm sure when they heard the song, they went to follow. So Sakwadie mm. also brought some spark. Do you understand? So never like this made me very known within, especially within the industry. Okay. Because I met most of them because of never like this. Like, okay. Do you understand? So I mean, I go for some programs. I see them. Oh, that's a girl that signed never like this. Yeah, da 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 da. Okay. And people started knowing me. From that, then I dropped control. Then I dropped Sumimu with Bisakede. Yeah. Then Sumimu also brought the spark again. Yeah. With Bisakede. Because there was, you know, another. Person. Right. Yeah. And then in August 2020, we dropped the CEP, which yeah. had the Angelic Forever on it. Yeah. And that song. That song was doing good in Ghana. It was doing good, but it wasn't really doing extremely good it was good like people were listening to it yeah. and then the song entered the nigerian market yeah then it came back again so the song dropped in august 2020 we were about to drop a song at the beginning of this year but when the song entered the nigerian market the song came back all over again so the thing was that at a point did you also feel that so that because uh it was doing so well in nigeria i realized that a lot of people were using it for their snaps mm -hmm. on uh, social media mm -hmm. and all of that um because of that he resurrected you know the love for that song mm -hmm. or a i just for a better word to use resurrected the yeah the we can we can use that because for, for like forever. i like i said when it when we dropped in august and then it was doing good in ghana right so we thought we were done promoting that song yeah. so we were working on dropping another song as well so the song entered the market like you're saying and then the song so to them it sounded like a new song but here in ghana i had dropped it the year before okay so the song resurrected again and since that time, which was February, March, thereabout, right. it started entering into over 24 plus countries, especially in Africa. Yeah. And then I did the remix with Omale, and the song came back all over again. And again. Um, so, Forever Song, mm. what would you say um, has been the impact? Because a lot of people, I, I love forever. I mean, I can't deny that I, I don't love forever. Yes. My mind day for you. Know, yes. You know, my heart beats for you. I want to know the story behind forever. The song that has captured, you know, almost all of Afri mm -hmm. Africa. And also the impact you think that the, the forever has made on, you know, the people and your career as well. Okay. Um... So I wrote the song during quarantine period. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're on lockdown. Yeah. Um, during that period, I was just using it to listen to beats, write songs, listen to beats, try and learn new things and create new things. So I wrote that song in my room, alone, mm -hmm. in a dark room as well. Oh, yes, yeah, I was. I was doing it on my phone. Someone would say, "Was that? So how are you writing?" <laughs> I was typing it on my phone, right? And. The producer cross i've never met him before i don't okay. know him he said he produced the beats he was on water he was on the sea 
and then okay. he produced that song so he sent it to me i listened to the beat and i was like nah there's something about this beat like you can literally just listen to the instrumentals and you feel relaxed mm. just the beat i listened to it over and over and over and i'm like what is this beat telling me what and i just knew it was just telling me something about love something positive about love do you understand so i'm just listening to it and i'm just imagining myself with somebody's son in the future mm. how my love life is going to Praise look like the Lord. you know the mm. vibes yeah, I feel so you. i was just imagining like i just closed my eyes and i'm just imagining Jonathan, especially okay. with the second verse good morning my love oh my god it's our wedding day eh? mm. i'm so glad i found someone to hold yeah it was me imagining myself telling somebody that yes and wrote the song ah I have a video. Did I record forever here? Oh, I record all this. Oh my! This see this place. Eh, it has to be a museum. Okay. Yes, I have a pee. If you relocate, make this place a museum because I recorded the entire all the songs on the EP here. here. Recorded forever. forever here. I even forgot. Wow. Nah, I have a pee. He's a legend. If, yeah. If I hadn't, <laughs> if I hadn't, you know, asked you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it would have skipped me. So yeah. recorded everything here. And I remember I Papi told me that that song, after recording all of it, mm -hmm. he said that song, there's something about that song. There's something yeah. about And I think what is making people like it is easy. You can mm -hmm. easily learn the lyrics, yeah. right? And then it's relatable as well. The beats, you can dance to, but you can just sit down and bob to it. Everything about that song is just sweet. Do you understand? And Omale also came yeah. and blessed the remix. And the song, now the remix was even nicer than the original. No, they're all nice. <laughs> and, and you went to, I think you went to Nigeria, you had, you know, a media tour. Yeah. Came back, then we, then the, the remix came. Yeah, we shot the video in Nigeria. in Nigeria. So my trip to Nigeria was actually mainly to shoot the video okay. and then do a media run on my EP. So we did a lot of radio and TV interviews, met up with some of the artists there, mm. and then we shot the, the remix. Nigeria. So uh, I, I I saw something about you. You mentioned that um, a lot of uh, everybody mm -hmm. in this world has been giving a gift, a voice, mm. and you chose the voice for music. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody. I, well, I chose I chose journalism. I yeah. chose presenting. Yes, and I'm doing it so well. You know, are you doing it so well? And where are we going? I mean, this is just the beginning. Yeah. There's an EP out. Forever is doing well. Need, need me is here. You're recording, you know, a lot. A lot more. So in Ghana, I, I, I correct me if I'm mistaken, but you know, people start this journey mm. and then stop at a point yeah, because they decided true. that okay, it's my life mm -hmm. and I want to move on to other things. Yeah. Um. How is the plan like? Because you chose music, so I am thinking that. This is what you want to do for life. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Or, or? So the thing is, you know, when I was starting, like I said, I was thinking about friends and family. You know, what's up? Let me send you. I dropped a song. Go, hey, let me send it to you. And I sent it. Do you understand? I wasn't thinking about the outside world. Mm. But when I got involved, when I started getting the attention from like a lot more people, then I realized that nah, people are now, some people, are not depending on my music. Yeah. Do you understand? Because to be very honest with you, sometimes I feel like a counselor. People send me paragraphs of what my song has done to them, mm. what 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 they feel when they listen to my songs. You know, there's a lot more to just releasing the songs and just listen. And I'm always about the emotions. Do you understand? Mm. And right now, even if I want to stop, I have to think about the person listening. Yeah. So for the sake of person That's A and B. I have to keep doing the music do you understand we have die-hard fans we have people that would do anything to to listen to you and for those people i can't stop the music it's like i'm now so much into it from for the people mm. that i can't stop. can't stop so if i mean nobody knows the future but for me now this is something i want to do for a long time mm. and the future is very bright yeah. do you understand Definitely. and this has been not just the hard work 
not just from my voice, you yeah. know. My manager is doing serious work behind the scenes. You know, the media, multimedia most especially, man, the, the support has been serious. Yeah. Do you understand? And somebody somebody might see it and be like, mm, you know, something has gone inside. But you people are doing it like from deep, 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 deep down. Oh, yeah, we always Real love, and that is serious. The DJs, the presenters, mm. the fans, if they are not streaming your music, Dropping it doesn't make sense. They've also been supporting. My family has also not stopped me from anything. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about your family. Yeah. Uh, maybe when when uh, you decide to take me out <laughs> because I, I like walking. You know, I feel. But, you. Yeah, but, we can. We need to do that. Yeah, on the street. Yeah, take us through. But before before I mean before we 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 leave, I want to find out. I mean, still on the music and in your career do you feel un, un, under pressure you know mm -hmm. and also the first time i had a conversation with you it, it, it was just a short interview mm. uh, yeah 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 back, yeah I, remember. I i i think i asked you what genre of music do you do mm. because this is slow you know and and all you can do anything yeah afro i think you said afro -beans. yeah afro fusion afro fusion yeah. and and how is the afro fusion doing here in ghana is it yeah. um do you think that we can sustain the afro fusion considering the fact that uh, a lot of ghanaians uh, well i've been to many shows and you step out and you notice that you know most most of the people are jamming to you know the yeah the ones that can <laughs> the jam to, songs yeah the, the Abbey songs they call it uh, and 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 so i'm thinking you know the afro fusion uh why, why is that headed you know yeah. because and I, I don't even know which one we're promoting is it the high life which your dad uh, mm -hmm. sort of represented and yeah. is still representing um, the afro fusion the afro beats perfect so one thing that i actually want to say is i feel I feel we need to expand our sound. Mm. Do you understand? One thing about me is I listen to every genre of music. I don't need to know the artist to, to listen to or to want to listen to the music. I listen to country, I listen to high life, hip life, hip hop, reggae, gospel, everything that is music, I listen to it. I feel like we need to expand our sound. Mm. Do you understand? We don't need to just if maybe we set our mind that high life is all we want to listen to. So if you are not a high life artist, we are not listening to you. Nah. There are lots of talents here. Some of them don't do um high life, hip life, hip hop. Some of them do R and B, some of them do reggae, mm. some of them even do house music. Do you understand? But because we don't listen to those genres, we feel if you're not doing if you're not doing high life we're not gonna listen to you now Ghana we have a lot of talent mm. and sometimes we also focus our attention to the people we know if we're not familiar with you yeah. uh, if you drop music why should we listen mm. try and listen okay you might fall in love with it it might actually be a sound that you listen to and it takes a lot to write and record mm. it takes a lot to even be shooting videos, going around to promote your sound, it's very difficult sometimes. And music also comes with depression. Okay. You know, sometimes you that. You know, sometimes you drop a song and then nobody is really listening. So because nobody is paying attention to you, you feel what you're doing is bad. Mm. But what you're doing might be very good. Mm. But because you are not getting that attention. Charlie, this thing I need to stop. Do you understand? Am I doing it wrong? Is that why people are not listening? Mm. That is why most of the artists they start and then they give up. Okay. Do you understand? Because okay. they feel what they are doing is wrong. But what you are doing is right, but because the people are not paying attention to you, they decide to give up. And that's one thing about me. I don't know how to do that. I don't I don't I don't really pay attention to the hype. Mm. Do you understand? Me personally, I've told myself what I'm doing is good. Okay. What I'm doing is Believe nice. In yourself. It's nice. If I would drop a song and only 30 people will listen, trust me, I'm good to go. Okay. If I drop the song and it's not the most popular song in the country in the world, trust me, I'm good to go. I'm only I'm usually thinking about the impact what the song is doing in mm. people's lives. Do you understand? Yeah. If two people were testing like Jackie, this song you drop is my favorite, blah 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 blah. I'm doing good. Do you understand? And I feel like when you have those things in your mind, you can do the music for a long time. 
Do you understand? I don't, I don't follow the hype. I don't follow trends. I'm doing music, and I'm just going. Do you understand? And I, I will go a long, a long way. Yeah. I mean, we'll definitely, you and, will. And like you I said, will. the thing, the, the, the motive is we're taking Ghana music to the world. To the world. And another thing is... How are you doing that, though? I, I mean... that you've I'm, conquered Nigeria. Yeah, you, you no, travel, not just you, Nigeria, you, you East Africa. To, yeah, you went to Tanzania yeah, the last time. I went yeah, to Tanzania. It was massive. Yeah, I went for a show and I did a song with one of the artists there. Okay. And then I did some media run as well. Okay. The thing is, like, like I'm saying... Taking Ghana music to the world, we're not just doing music that was just it was just going to stay in Ghana. in Ghana. We're taking yeah. the name of the country to the to rest the of the world. world. Do you understand? And <clears throat> it's going to it's going to happen. Yeah, I'm positive. Because I'm positive you know one thing is a lot of people also feel it's just forever. It's not just forever. Why you think that I hosted a show? That... Yeah, some people. I mean, some people. A lot of people. <laughs> they feel that oh, she's just the one, a one hit maker. Maker. I mean, that okay. is your opinion, though. I hosted a show in yeah. Kumasi. Does that affect you? It does. It's their opinion. Okay. It doesn't affect me. But you know, it's affecting you. I think it's affecting you know, because you know, I, that's I'm why... not too sure. I know anybody who said that you're just a one hit. Oh, uh, then oh, then I oh, am so missing you, out. So you so you listen to people when yeah, they I'm talk. Yeah, missing out. I see it, I hear it. I mean, okay. oh. but how do you feel? Even even the son of God, even him. Mm. People say things about him, you know. Okay. People said a lot of things about him. How much more me? But you think <laughs> it's, it it's normal. It's but, very very but normal. But you think it will stop? It's also a challenge that um, yes, of course, a lot of people don't know uh, how much work goes into what you do, creating, yeah. you know, waking up, writing music, mixing, and all the things that you do here. But yeah. then, sometimes set on social media, most mostly, not on radio or anywhere, but uh, sit on social media, say whatever they want to say, bad comment, throws. Yeah. I feel and like the, the music industry is like... It's like, gonna it's, come it's, every it's, day. It does. Yeah, the music industry. It could be like a school or a workplace. Okay. Do you understand? Wherever you end up, there are rules and regulations. Okay. You know, probably if you are going to the military, there are some things you are going to face. I feel like trolls, critics, mm. is part of, of the music prospectus. So it's like somebody telling you, are you ready to do music? If you want to do music, you should be ready for attacks. You should be ready for trolls. You should be ready for people to tell you what you're doing is trash. Mm. Be ready for it. Okay. If you're not ready, don't go into it. It's not just with music, movies. Anybody in the entertainment or not just in the entertainment, anybody in the limelight, you are going to get trolled for it. So if you're not ready to get trolled, don't get into it. I knew that was what was going to happen. Mm. I got in... <laughs> And there's no difference. You're managing. Are it's, you? this, it's the same. Are you managing or you're, you know, looking beyond? The, yeah, the, I mean, the if I tell you that, oh, it is absolutely nothing, that would be a lie. Okay. I mean, sometimes you, you see a comment on your social media and then it will just hit you the moment you read it. It's painful because you're human. Do you mm -hmm. understand? I mean, mm -hmm. some people say some things and then you feel if you actually knew me personally, would you say this? You wouldn't say that. But, like I said, there are opinions. And another thing that has even strength, strengthened me the more that no matter what anybody says, which is negative, mm. it's not going to get to me a single bit. It's from the show I hosted in Kumasi. Mm. That show I hosted made me just come to a conclusion that Jacqueline, you are doing the right thing. Mm. Anybody that came for that show sang my songs word for word. Mm. The love from the crowd, we sold out the event. And that was my first time hosting a show yeah. in Kumasi. And it, we did massively well. It wasn't really, people didn't really talk about it. But low key, they saw it. It was aired on TV. Yeah. yeah. But you know, you know the vibes already. Ain't you know? We are doing, we are doing, we are not going to do what is different from what we wanted to do. No matter what is trending, what is the actual trend, if we are going pink, we are going pink to the end. How is life as a celebrity? I've always wanted to know, mm. you know, in the limelight, how does it feel like to be in the limelight, you know, mm. just you? It's sweet. 
sometimes, okay. you know. Because even especially being a girl, when you get compliments, one one is nice. How much one gets in compliment from a lot of people? It's very nice. It's it's a big mod. I feel like when you get compliments, it it makes you get confident in yourself. Okay. It gives you some sort of enthusiasm. So I would say the positive part mm. is like it's a very good feeling. Knowing that your music is doing something positive for people is a good feeling. And I mean the negatives as well, people can say anything they want to you. Mm. People can can dispute your hard work, mm. your sleepless nights. Mm. Somebody can just come and say anything to you and it's painful, do you understand? So that struggles, you know, sometimes you might even be in a bad mood and then you go somewhere and then the people that know you, they'll come to you, Jackie, can we take pictures? Can we do this? Can we do that? No matter what mood you're in, you have to, you smile. Have to smile. Because that day could be the only day the person would see you and the person would take your response away, mm. do you understand? So you always have to be happy around your fans outside you always have to show positivity and all of that but i mean it's 50 50 there's positives and there's negatives to it you understand i mean and then it, it has also made me grow the more the industry has made me grow from the person i was in 2019 and now it's been it's been a massive growth wow yeah wow wow so uh, before fame, there are, you know, a few regular things that you do mm -hmm. as, you know, uh, beautiful Jackie just, you know, doing her own thing. Yeah. But after fame or, uh, well, we're still in the process, you're still, you know, you know, famous. Have you done, you know, any regular thing, you know, as a famous person? Before? Yeah. Like regular thing, like, you know, walking down the streets, getting whatever you want to get, uh, maybe mm -hmm. going to the market or... Getting yeah. your own phone credit. I feel you. Um, so one thing is I don't joke with my food. Okay. I love food a lot. Okay. And you don't look I like still... it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> one thing about me is I love fufu okay. very much. Yeah. So I still eat at the fufu joints that I eat at. Do you understand? Okay. Um, my area. Most of the times, the shop that is opposite or a bit far from my house, when there's no one at home, I still go and get my things. Okay. Do you understand? And what else? What else do I still do? Mm. I still buy my plantain and beans. Yeah. Okay. There's a plantain and beans seller. Okay. But for her place, I have to nowadays. I have to like always go there with someone. Yeah. So I still okay. go there. I buy it and then I eat. I come home and then I eat. Yeah. Okay. I think I still so do that. today, uh, now that I'm in Kumasi, I've never been in Kumasi like during the night, mm. right? So do I get the opportunity uh, for you to, to take me around? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. will your fufu be uh, still available by this time? What is the time? It's wow, six o'clock. Oh, six o'clock. I think you be do one night at the end. And I have been So what can we do? Um, mm. you know, in, in Kumasi, but what I want to take you around. I well, yeah, yeah, I, I'd yeah. love we to. Can, we can just take a stroll downstairs, okay? I might be right on your street, yes. yeah. We can okay. do that, I think. But I'd love to that, visit Ahonjo, Ahonjo, Ahonjo. yeah. Okay, oh, it's called what Ahonjo, Ahonjo, yeah. Ahonjo. 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 There's a lot of places, at Ahonjo, and there's a lot of most of the hotels, the, the pubs, okay. most of the fun places are Ahonjo. Yeah. Let's see if we can find something. So, Jackie was so gracious to me. She decided to take us uh, on a tour uh, to her secondary school where she's going, her previous secondary school here in Kumasi. And guess what happened? Mm -hmm. The love was amazing. I was personally overwhelmed. We couldn't really do anything there. We couldn't say hello to her headmistress. Senior house mistress. All we had to do is to move. Yes, but that's 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 the love uh, people have here for Jackie. But we're still here inside Kumasi. The conversation continues. I'm so glad I found someone to go till eternity. Still on the streets of Kumasi, Jackie Jacks. I love to call her. 
uh, is still here with me. I uh, know yeah. you're feeling yourself. I'm feeling myself. So, Jackie, for oh, somebody... Oh, and I have a man. So, for somebody uh, who has been in the industry for just, you know, three years, looking back, we went to your school. I mean, yeah. I was just telling uh, you know, the viewers that we went to your school and looking at the love that was thrown at you. Some, at a point, I noticed that they were you know, uh, pulling your hair and, yeah. and all of that. How do you feel? It's an amazing feeling. Mm. First, because ever since I graduated secondary school, yeah. the only time I went there was when Forever dropped fresh. Okay. When it hadn't started going international. Yeah. I went there for, they had a show, an entertainment show. I went there. That was, I think, in 2020. Mm. Ever since, I've not been there. So, and the funny thing is, the people that are in school now, the students, yeah. they weren't there when I was a when student. Yeah. Do you understand? And so it's a fresh love. Yeah. I don't even know any of the students there, but what was so amazing was the teachers that taught me when I was a student, mm. they are still there. We couldn't have the opportunity to speak yeah, to them because, because of, of the, the love. I, I, I want to call it love. Yeah. But, but Jackie, um, tell me about, you know, schooling and you know how how do you juggle schooling and because now i know that you're still in school you're almost done mm -hmm. and how do you juggle school with uh, music because even way back right you were still doing music yeah. and you're still schooling yeah it's it's real at first i used to say it was is normal it's calm mm. because i i didn't know this was how the attention was going to get so when people started giving me their attention, when people started giving me their attention, now I need to divide my focus mm. to music and to school. Now, here is the, the worst part. Okay. I'm reaching a setting level each time in okay. my music. Okay. The attention is getting bigger, and I'm also getting to the most difficult part in school, mm. where you have to do your project, you have to defend, you are about to graduate school, so you have to be focused on the books. Otherwise, your graduation is going to be some way, do you understand? And so, it has gotten very difficult, do you understand? But you're almost done. Yeah, almost done, yeah. almost done. And right now, it's like, I mean, I'm human. I'm beginning to get extremely interested in the music, okay. do you understand? And so sometimes, you'll be studying, and then, I remember a song that I was about to finish. I'll pause it. I'll go and listen to the beat. Okay. And I'm like, no, Jackie. No, Jackie. <laughs> you need to finish Yes. <laughs> Switch back. Then I go back and then I study. Okay. So right now, I mean... How long do you have to, you know... Uh, I have a couple of weeks. Oh, a couple of weeks. So, oh, congratulations to you. Mm -hmm, oh, that's the mm -hmm, new graduate you see right mm -hmm. here. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure, I mean, you, you spoke uh, so well of your family. Obviously, family comes first. Yeah. And uh, your parents have been very supportive considering what you told me um, uh, in, back in the studio. Yeah. Uh, tell me about family life. Uh, growing up in a music or music oriented home, mm. I, I, I should say. Uh, how does it feel like growing up uh, with a father mm -hmm. who is equally a good and a famous musician, right. a legend right. for that matter? Right. Uh, how, how has you know, the whole thing been you know, growing? I, I just want to have a feel, I'm sure a lot of people out there mm -hmm. want to know how it feels like growing up you know, as Jackie. Right. It, my dad it has been a lesson for me because I was, you know, the thing is, I was learning a lot of things that I didn't know I was learning that was going to be good to me this present time. You know, I go with him to the studio. I saw him record. Mm. Sometimes before his shows, he rehearses with a band in the house sometimes, you know, and then I see him and I see, I was able to witness love from his fans. People mm. see him and they call his name, they want to take pictures with him and that. I witness all of that and some of his colleagues in the industry as well. So my dad was also someone who always plays music at home. Mm. He, he, he did not just um, bring up my love for music, he also brought up my love for high life because he listens to high life songs a lot. You know, and he's always writing. In his room, he has 
a lot of sheets because he's always writing. Mm. He's always writing music. So he loves to write as well. So I saw all of that. Mm. And then the funny thing is, because he's my dad, you know, I wasn't really seeing the superstar feeling. Because I see him as daddy, mm. people from outside see him as Nane Champo. Yeah. He drops us in school and the teachers are always like, hey, who are Nane Champo? Who are playing Nane Champo? And it's now that I'm feeling what he was feeling mm. and what he is still feeling. I mean, people still see him and they give him the due respect. So growing up with Nane Champo, I mean, like I said, I wasn't really seeing it then, but yeah. right now I'm like, hey, you, we the are crying, we are crying. We are crying. So but, it was an amazing thing. Yeah, like but, but I mean, obviously, I'm sure he's giving you lots of advice mm -hmm. uh, as a young musician, what you should do, not to do yeah. in the industry. Which one would be your, uh, which one would you remember, you know, on top of your head? Like, tell us, you know, viewers. Yeah, one thing that my dad always wanted me to do was to be unique. Okay. Do you understand? And he has always mentioned the fact that I'm not supposed to do something that I'm not comfortable with. Okay. If you are doing something and you know this thing, mm, Jacqueline, this is not you. I should yeah. not even think of doing it. And not even that something that you feel your family is going to feel disappointed. Mm. If you do it, I'm not supposed to do it. I'm supposed to be myself from whatever I've been when I was born till whenever I'm going to be in this world. I just have to be myself. Mm. That's one thing that he has always been saying, not just to me, but to my younger siblings as well. I have three, three you, younger siblings. Oh, okay. I have a, all, a brother. Okay. Yeah, and then I have two young girls. How how, how do they feel about their uh, big ah, sister they all are over the big, place? They are huge fans of my music. I'm sure their friends are even tired of me because <laughs> they're always, always talking, posting, mm. telling everybody, oh, ja, Jackie is my sister. What? Jackie is my big sister. Who are you? I yes. Be, I want to be. Yeah, I so, want to be in their shoes. So my siblings are really proud. Mm. And my mom is also I was, super. I was coming to your mom. Super proud. Mrs. Maria Champo is super mm. proud of me. Yeah. I mean, she. Does she have a favorite of all your songs. And she knows. She's, she loves all my songs. But you know the funny thing? She's always fumbling. Or the lyrics, but she shames to see her. She loves all my songs. She sings it everywhere she goes. She's a huge fan. Yeah. She will see anything she sees on social media about me. She send it to me, Jackie. Send this to me. Why have you send this to me? Send all of it. I need to post it. You know. Okay. My mom has been like I said earlier on. Yeah. I didn't know she was grooming, grooming. me. Yeah. From that, Bejina Menim Natunyom. Yes. You need to do this. You need yeah. to take the microphone. Take this. All of that she groomed me very well and aside that she has been a good mother mm. i would say she has trained me yeah do you understand to be that young girl that she wanted me to be and bigger does, bigger does, to her does she that. have a favorite song of your dad's of my dad's yeah uh my mom would be very mom, interesting to know which of funny the songs. enough you know funny enough that's one thing i've not asked her because i mean aside the fact that she's my dad's wife she was also very, she was my, my dad's producer. Oh. Yeah, she was the one doing all of, you know those times they used to sell CDs and that. She, she was the one that was tracking all of my dad's music sales, every, everything like that. So she, she's also in, in the she music. was in the music, but right now, I mean, she's, she's been relaxed yeah, a bit. Yeah, she's, she's, she's giving you the she's, muscle. Yeah, she's just been the mother. So, um, what would you? What advice would you give uh, your or your say sixteen-year-old self? Mm -hmm. One thing I'll tell sixteen-year-old Jackie mm. this very moment to be the fact that she shouldn't settle for less mm. because the future is very bright. Settling for less in terms of doing some like if you know you are gold. You know you are very unique. Anything that is beyond what you have, you are never going to accept mm. or settle for that. Because the thing is, when people know there's something different about you, they want to do anything to use you. Mm. And when you know your price, mm. if, if somebody tells you, I want you to paint this wall pink, you don't want the wall to be pink. You don't need to do it because maybe the person tells you, if you paint it pink, I'm going to make you get this, this kind of thing or get that kind of thing. But if you know pink is not for you, you are going to go back 
and be in your corner until you do the color you want to do. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Makes, so makes what, the only thing I'll tell 16-year-old Jackie is that she is really unique and that she shouldn't settle for less. Definitely. I yeah. wouldn't want to settle for less. Thank you so much for that advice. <laughs> yeah. And... Well, it's, it's been a very long conversation. Yeah. I hope that you have been entertained. It has been e-vibes. Jackie had time to tell her story. I'm sure you've been inspired. Uh, Jackie will be going to town from here. I haven't eaten the whole of today. Yeah, Hopefully we need to take we... some videos as well. Oh, we're taking videos. That's mm. what superstars do. Mm. Mwah, 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 I know mwah, vibes. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> so uh, let's 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 say a very big thank you to Carla Marx. Let's say a very big thank you to J N jazz hair for my beautiful hair jackie's still snapping and let's <laughs> also say a very big thank you to uh, g and j closet yeah for my uh, tea and my you know just the outfit yeah and thank you to the crew people i love you new thing i love you um fantino uh, thank you, everyone. Everyone, thank you. We well, love you. Jackie, since you well, you have love for entertainment, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure you you. Uh, I mean, if we're not doing music, what would I be doing? I'd have been an entrepreneur, and then maybe okay. I would have put my head into anything entertainment. Okay, so yeah. I'm an entertainment entertainment journalist. Uh, I present entertainment. Okay. This is E Vibes. You just you know literally hosted me. Okay. Please end the show for us. That's your camera right there. E vibes with Jackie. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Becky Jackie. Ah! <laughs> Can you make a song out of yeah, it? I'll do that. Becky, Are you Jackie, working Jackie, on any Becky. other thing though? Uh, me, I'm, every day I'm just recording musical. Okay. So there's like we we just keep recording, keep recording, keep recording. So what's new? What's new now? What's new right now? I've dropped Need Me, so that's the focus okay. now. That's what we are promoting. Okay. Yeah, the video is also out on YouTube and, and it's doing I noticed your management has been doing, you know, something incredible with Jackie. Yeah, big yeah. shouts to my manager, mm. Electro Mirror. He's the CEO of Flip the Music. Okay. Ever since I started working with Electro Mirror, Agbo Shikome, it has been an amazing journey. Wow. You know, he's one person that if he says we are doing A, no matter the the bad vibes, the bad roots. He makes sure that if we want to achieve A, that is what it's going to be. And he has always made me feel like a superstar, even from the beginning of everything. Mm. And the funny thing is, this hasn't been an easy road, you know. People feel because my dad is Mane Champong, it has been a smooth road. But he wanted me to feel how it's like to start from the very beginning mm. and penetrate. Okay. Do you understand? So my dad was just relaxed. Do it if you want to do it. Do it. Yeah. So I did that with Flip the Music, with Electro Mirror, mm. and it was a step by step journey. And we are still climbing, you know, we're still not there because there's a lot we want to achieve. Do you understand? Well, big shout outs to Flip the Music. It looks like that's, you know, Jackie's uh, manager. Outro. Yeah. For the show. Hey, no, I have to let them know, see my journalism. Okay, uh, please. Uh, let me just stand somewhere. Or do right. you want me to stand behind you? Yes. No, so stand for... next to me now. I'm interviewing you. Okay, please. So, okay. we're coming to the end of today's interview with the beautiful Becky. She, she made us aware of whatever she has been doing today. And we are going to end, but I'll see you same time next week. It's E Vibes with Jackie, Becky. Hacking. We love you, our mind. <laughs> Day for, for you. you.